Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Explorers. To start this week, I have a very special birthday greeting I need to send out. Joey has done it, he has hit double figures, he has turned 10 this weekend. And just to celebrate your birthday, we have a whole public holiday. So no school for you on your birthday. Well done and thank you for having a birthday. We really needed that public holiday. So let everybody join in with me as we sing happy birthday to Joey. We'll sing our two explorer versions and then I'm gonna pray to start our episode. So join with me as we sing. One, two. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Joey. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, only one will not do. Take Christ as your saviour, and then you'll have to. From all of us at Explorers, happy birthday, Joey. Now let's pray and we'll start our episode. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for today. Thank you for another episode of Explorers. Please bless everyone as they watch and help us to learn something wonderful about you today. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Genesis 1, 9 through 13, we read about the third day of creation. God caused the dry land to bulge up out of the waters and form the mountains and hills and deserts. And then he covered the land with plants and trees and bushes. The third day, God made different kinds of minerals and metals in the earth. And some of those are very pretty. Here's some minerals that we have. I'm gonna shine a black light on them and you'll notice they turn a beautiful colors here when I shine the black light on. You know, there's a lot of beauty in our world that we can't see that only God can enjoy because it's deep within the earth. On day three, God created the different metals and minerals in the earth. I here have here a lump of iron. It's rusty, rusty old iron. I'm gonna put some aluminum foil on it, just like this. And I'm gonna strike these together and see if I can get some electrons to come out of these lumps of iron. So let's watch and see if we can do Maybe that. Maybe we should turn that other light off. Okay. Not that one, the other one. Maybe we should turn both lights off. Turn the other light off. Hello Explorers, it's uh, time for some more games. Um, as you know, we've been focusing on some unique activities or sports, and uh, this week's no different. Uh, we've all been in uh, isolation, and um, some people in our church and others have been getting into doing puzzles, uh, thousand piece puzzles, hundred piece puzzles, whatever they've uh, felt they can do. So this week, we, we went and investigated and found out that there is competitive puzzling. Uh, it's done in teams of two, and uh, you're given a thousand piece puzzle, and then the world, world record or the best time that's ever been done is just under an hour. So, and, uh, so we, we had a go at it at our house. We went, we, we went a little bit easier on ourselves. We did a hundred piece puzzle. Myself and Mrs. Nicole we went against each other head to head, <laughs> and you'll see it in a few minutes, in a few moments. And uh, so, this was the winning puzzle in the end. But so, have fun watching that as we uh, we tackle it. In it, it sped up a little bit because it did take a little while. <laughs> so, have fun watching that, and uh, hopefully, it gives you some different ideas of how you can do your puzzling. All right, see you later.
Lovers, it's time to sing again. Let's warm our voices up by singing the days of creation. We'll sing it two times through. Let's sing S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. We can't get to heaven without being saved. And thanks to Jesus Christ, we have a way to get to heaven and be with him forever. Salvation, being saved from our sins. We learned last week, every sin needs atonement. All right, we all need our sin atoned for, and we are all sinners. And Jesus has made that way. He has paid the atonement. He's paid that price for us. And he willingly did it for us. Let's sing now. S-A-L-T-A-V-I-O-N. singing. Our next song talks about how our heart was dark with sin until the Savior came in. Let's sing it together now. My heart was dark with sin until the Savior came in. His precious blood I know has washed me white as snow and in Let's try a new song together, Explorers. This one is called Wounded For Me. All right, it's probably new to most of you. And why don't you listen to me sing it through one time and then we'll sing it all together. All right, wounded for me, wounded for me. There on the cross, he was wounded for me. Gone my transgressions and now I am free. All because Jesus was wounded for me. transgressions. That's just a big word for sin, the things that we've done wrong. We've broken God's law and um, that is what transgressions are gone. But Jesus can make us rid of all of them, all right, by cleansing us with his precious blood. So let's sing once together now, Wounded for Me.
next week. Well, hello, explorers. We are up to lesson number 44 tonight. And uh, this is a very special day in our family, as you probably already know. Our middle son, Joey, turned 10, would you believe? So uh, for Friday, when Explorers is usually on, we would, have, uh, we would have sung Happy Birthday to Joey. Tonight, we are going to be looking at the fact that Jesus knew what was going to happen to him when he went to the cross to die for our sins. So this is investigation number 44. Did Jesus know what would happen? And the answer we will see from the Bible is that, yes, Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. Now, I know this is true of me and it's probably true of you, but uh, we spend a lot of our time in our life trying to avoid dangerous situations or obviously to avoid accidents or pain uh, for instance, if you have a bike, you have to wear a helmet when you ride your bike because uh, the government wants to make sure that people are safe and if they fall off their bike, that they won't uh, crack their head open and have brain damage or even worse. And so a lot of the time in our life, we, you know, wisely, we try and avoid dangerous situations. But... There are, there are times when, and there are times in Jesus' life when he knew that, 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 that danger and pain and suffering was ahead, but he was willing to endure those things for us. And we're going to learn about what the Lord knew uh, before he was crucified at Calvary. And uh, tonight we're going to spend our time looking at Matthew chapter 26 and there are, it's a very long chapter we're going to look at some verses out of Matthew 26 and you know the first thing we uh, we're going to learn tonight is that Jesus was betrayed he was betrayed by one of his closest friends one of his closest friends in Matthew 26 it says in verse 14 it says that one of the 12 Okay, one of the 12 hand-picked disciples of Jesus, his name was Judas Iscariot. He went to the chief priests. These were the enemies of Jesus. And he said, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. And from that time on, he sought to betray Jesus. And, uh, you know, the really scary thing about Judas Iscariot was that though he had been with Jesus for three years and he had been greatly trusted by the Lord and by the others he was what we call the treasurer he looked after uh, the money that was given to Jesus and his disciples so they could stay uh, traveling and they could have food and some somewhere to stay as they as they journeyed around though Judas was wonderfully trusted Unfortunately, Judas had never really been forgiven by the Lord. Judas had never become a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, do you know what that tells me? That tells me that there are people who can, they could go to explorers, even for a few years. They could be in churches for years. They could be in a Christian school from, from prep through to grade 12. And they could hear the truth of God's word every day. And yet leave, leave the school not knowing the Lord personally. They can leave church not knowing the Lord personally. And I hope that uh, if you've been coming to Explorers a long time, or you've been listening to some of the lessons this year, that, uh, that you wouldn't be like, none of us would be like Judas, who heard a lot of good things, saw a lot of good things, but never became a true follower of the Lord. 
And how sad that, that, that Judas only thought Jesus was worth the price of a slave. Uh, our Lord is, is of great value. In fact, we can't put a price tag on how much Jesus is worth to us. He's, he's worth everything to us. And yet Judas only thought that Jesus was worth a slave. That's very, very sad. And that's because Judas loved money and he loved possessions and things. They were his. They had become his God. So It's so tragic, so sad. And so I hope that we wouldn't be like Judas today, that we would know Jesus personally. And what Matthew 26 does, it, it, it takes us by steps to, towards the cross of Calvary. And uh, in fact, the night before the Lord Jesus died, uh, he went into a garden, a special garden called Gethsemane. And uh, he went there so that he could pray to God the Father. And he could have time with him, seeking strength and comfort uh, before he would go to the cross. And uh, the Lord knew what would happen to him. In fact, he told Peter, he told Peter that uh, his disciples would would uh, all abandon him, and that Jesus himself, oh, sorry, and that Peter himself would deny Jesus three times and. Peter just could not believe that. Peter didn't think that was possible. And yet, it did happen. It did happen. Uh, Peter did deny the Lord. And so the Lord knew what would happen to his own disciples. He knew their future. He knew his own future. Jesus knows our future. And so the Lord is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, he still takes Peter and a couple of his other disciples, James and John, brothers, and uh, he takes them into this garden and he, and he, and he tells them to, to sit and to pray while he would go and privately pray to the Father. And I'm very thankful that the Bible tells us what Jesus prays. Imagine if all we knew was that Jesus just went off to pray in the garden and we, we didn't have any idea about the things that he said to his father and uh, there is uh, one thing that Jesus prayed to his father it's in verse 38 he Jesus prayed in the garden my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death stay here and watch with me I doubt any of us have ever been that sad I'm, I'm certain of that that uh, that we could be sad even even to the point where we wanted to die. Think about that. Uh, I know we've all had some sadnesses this year. Maybe you're really sad that you, you couldn't go to school for a number of months or you couldn't play with your friends for a few months or you maybe had holidays booked that you had to cancel. All kinds of things have happened that would make us sorry. And yet Jesus' sorrow, Jesus' sorrow went, went way beyond whatever we could be sorry for or about and that is because Jesus knew what was coming for him at Calvary Jesus knew that when he would die on the cross the next day that he would have to take in himself all the all the suffering for our sin I mean all of us for all generation of people in every century, Old New Testament, right to the present, even those that will live after us, Jesus knew that he would he was going to have to take all of our punishment. And I mean that talk about a heavy burden. Talk about a difficult thing. And Jesus knew it. And so here's here's the thing, here's the thing that when Jesus went to the cross, he wasn't taken by surprise. He knew what it would involve, but he did so willingly. No one made him do it. This is something that he wanted to do uh, so that he could bring us salvation. We could be forgiven. 
So Jesus tells his father that he is so sorrowful. He is so sorrowful. And then he prays something else. He prays something else. Have a look at verse 39 where he says, Oh my father, if it is possible, if it's possible, let, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, there was no cup in his hand, but the Lord spoke about a cup as, as, as a picture. It was like the father was giving the son a cup and inside the cup, inside the cup was not a nice comforting drink, either hot or cold. But inside this cup, it represented suffering for sin and being punished for our sins. And, and Jesus, remember, though he is God's son, he's also a man. We know in the Bible he could get tired and hungry and thirsty. As a man, he had his limits. He had his limits. And Jesus is, is expressing to his father how hard this was going to be. He said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And so Jesus said very clearly, Father, this is not about me. This is about your will. And I want your will to be done. I want to do what pleases you. I wonder, is that our desire? To do the things that please God. That was Jesus' desire. That is what he wanted to do. And so what is very clear from Matthew 26 is that, is that Jesus knew how hard it was going to be. And yet he went to the cross anyway. And I think that's a great reminder for us because when, when, when we have to do hard things for God things that we don't find easy, things we don't find a breeze. We need to say to the Lord, I want to do your will. I want to please you. And, you know, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you that the disciples were supporting Jesus. I wish I could tell you that, remember, Peter, James, and John there elsewhere, he tells them to pray. I wish I could tell you that you know, they were supporting him 100%, but unfortunately, they were asleep. They fell asleep. We know from another account that they had been very sorrowful too. And maybe for them, it was just, we're so sad, we just want to rest. But here's the difference. Jesus was, was sorrowful even to the point of death, and he prayed but the disciples, they were sorrowful and they and they fell asleep. Jesus prayed and they fell asleep. Does that sound familiar to us? You know, we need to be like the Lord and not like those disciples. In times of trouble and sorrow, to call out to God, don't just tune out, go to sleep, or just try and forget about it, but go bring to the bring to God our troubles. And so Jesus tells them you need to watch and pray and don't enter into temptation. He said, your spirit is willing, but your flesh, your body is weak. And that's become a famous expression. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Well, do you know what? Remember how Jesus prays to the Father, uh, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Well, he actually prays this a second time. He prays this a second time. And then he prayed it a third time. A third time. Jesus had to bring this request to his father a few times. A few times. Uh, reminded of the Apostle Paul when he had a physical affliction, a problem, probably very bad eyesight. And th three times, like the Lord, he asked the Lord to take take this away, but the Lord said, no, you're going to have this, Paul, and I'm going to make you strong through this weakness. And so the point about 
Matthew 26 today is that Jesus was a willing sacrifice. He knew that he was going to be betrayed by Judas. He knew that Peter would deny him. He knew that his disciples would run away from him. But Jesus chose to go to the cross. Uh, you know, we live in a world where people think love is about how we feel about people. Do you know that a lot of people out there think that love is a feeling you have for someone? But actually, Bible love is a choice. Bible love is a choice. And when Jesus chose to go to the cross, it wasn't because we were awesome and fantastic and great. And Jesus just wanted to be our friend. No. The Bible says we were sinners and wicked and we were God's enemies. And yet Jesus loved us at our worst. At our worst. Love chooses. God's love loves the unlovely and the sinful and the unkind and the wicked. That's, that's what I am. That's what all of our hearts are. And so Jesus chose to go to the cross for us. And Jesus chose to do this because this was always God's plan of saving us. Do you know there is no other plan? There's no other plan B or C. Jesus going to the cross is God's plan A. And unless we accept plan A, we God is not going to say, well, you can have B or C or D or E. You can choose which way you go to heaven. Or maybe you, God doesn't say you can do good works to go to heaven. You can just uh, say, well, you know, Lord, I, I've had a hard time so far. I've done all this sin, but from now on, I'm going to try and be perfect. That won't happen. We know that. There's no other plan of being saved. But by accepting what Jesus did on the cross for our sins. And so the death of Jesus was God's plan of salvation from the beginning. And what this means is that we can never be in doubt about God's wonderful love for us. Do you, do you realize that? We can never be in any doubt about God's love for us. You know, you'll find at school, and I'm glad you're all back, that you're going to have friends come in and out of your life. You might be friends with this person for a year or two, and then maybe a friend will go to another school or move out of town. You'll move in and out of friends from primary and high school, things like that. And that's, that's what happens to all of us. Maybe you have uh, a problem with a friend and they just don't like you anymore. Or you, or you just don't have the same sports or hobbies or interests that you had. So friends can come and go sometimes. But you know, God, his love for us never goes. It never changes. God loved us when we're at our worst. And Jesus chose to go to the cross for us while we were sinners. And so Jesus was a willing sacrifice for us. And I hope that if we know that truth and, and we have been changed by that truth, that we'd be willing to do things for God now in our own life. That we'd be willing to live for him and willing to live for others. So that we can be like Jesus in choosing to love God and to love others.